Hey guys, Attorney Walter on. Now I'm in New Jersey, so my usual setup is not perfected. There's way too many lights on me, so let me go and do some of these lights to kind of make it a little bit better. This is my first video back. Boom, how's that? A little bit. Ah, that's okay. Here's the thing. Um, I am super hot, just so you know. It's because I'm covered in poison ivy, which is miserable. But I wanted to go through something that you need to learn about immediately, which is that Canada is proposing this idea about essentially reducing the ability of people to have handguns. And part of the problem inherent with this idea of not allowing people to, you know, purchase handguns going forward is that uh, if you were to do that, you would restrict individuals who are disabled or retired who are more likely to be part of a class of individuals, right? So in law, we look at people in the form of classes, right? Could be a race-based class. It could be a, uh, you know, a, a gender-based class. It could be a disabled person that's part of a disabled class or retired class. But we look at, in law, people as, you know, individuals part of a class of individuals. Think of it as like the club that they're part of, right? So kind of the bottom line is, and I know I look super terrible. I've been outside for the past three days nonstop. The whole point of this is that Canada is now coming out with the identity of saying, we want to ban handguns. You can keep the ones you have to some degree. We want to do a buyback, all these things. But here's the problem. Retired individuals are older. They are at a significantly higher level of likelihood of getting robbed, attacked by other individuals who view them as somebody who's weak and can be taken. Ergo, there's a problem. Another thing, disabled individuals, especially those in wheelchairs or those with walkers or those with rollators, they are not able to escape. One of the problems I have with the identity of taking away firearms from the retired and the disabled is that the traditional norms of what we expect the average person to do, right? The, the classic scenario, what would the normative standard, the basic, you know, the regular person do? What would our cab driver do? The problem is that we apply the standard and expect them to, depending on which state you're in, either to run away from the problem, Stand your ground if the problem occurs, etc. But when it comes to the retired and the disabled, there's no question. They're not going to be able to run away, right? That, that's, that's out of the question. They're probably not going to be able to stand their ground very well in capacity against somebody who, you know, steals from people or tries to hurt people, etc. So we're dealing with a class of individuals who have to have some equalizing or putting them in a better position weaponry. Howdy, guys. Howdy, love pugs. Uh, howdy, howdy, concepts. So we're going to be going through an article real quick. The New York Times put out, Canada aims to force owners of military-style assault weapons to turn them in. That's not the only thing. It's it's more than that. Um, this is from the New York Times, but I, I want to make clear, the New York Times obviously leaning one particular way. I picked that one so that you know we can see kind of the bias potential there um, and then kind of go from there. Here's the first quote. We have a responsibility to act prevent, to prevent more tragedies, Prime Minister Trudeau said, as he proposed tightening the country's already stringent control on firearms. Uh, most owners of what can, and this is uh, Ian Austin uh, and Vojosa Isaiah, uh, May 30, 2022. All right. Most owners of what Canada calls military style assault weapons would be required to turn over the firearms to government buyback program under legislation introduced on Monday, which would tighten the country's already stringent control on firearms. The Canadian government also immediately imposed new regulations banning the sale, purchase, importation, or transfer of handguns. They fit in your hand as opposed to long barrel guns. As a government, as a society, we have a responsibility, this is a quote from them, to act to prevent more tragedies, said Trudeau. Told the reporters, he also said we need only look south of the border to know if we do not take action firmly rapidly, it gets worse and worse and more difficult to counter. The proposed law is the latest in a series of steps Mr. Trudeau has taken to restrict firearms since 22 people were killed in rural Nova Scotia by gunmen in 2020. The legislation, which could apply to thousands of firearms, is expected to pass. The buyback proposal comes as another mass shooting in the United States has reignited an often searing debate on gun violence. Uh, 20 children and six adults were massacred in 2012 at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Uh, I'm just, at this point, I'm just summarizing because it's just, you know, the, the classic, we are using emotion to decide people's rights, which is never how you do it. That's why the extreme, extreme left has lost an immense amount of people at this point. The Small Arms Survey, a nonprofit organization, and guys, always be very wary of these nonprofit organizations. When people say nonprofits don't have a dog in the fight, if nobody gives them money, then they go out of business, which means that they're the greatest dog in the fight because if nobody pays them to exist, they disappear. 
So more so than corporations, more so than the government, nonprofits have the highest standard, the highest level of a dog in the fight, because if they don't have money, they can't exist. And they don't make money like a for-profit company does. Soon after the, the deadly 2020 rampage in Nova Scotia, Mr. Trudeau used a cabinet order to announce it would ban more than 1,500 models of rifles, including the AR-15, a popular military-style semi-automatic rifle. Now, let me just skip through this stuff real quick uh, to kind of get to the point of it. They are doing this as a reaction. They are removing people's rights as a reaction to emotion. This is not a smart move. It's never been a smart move. That means the criminals that gun get guns illegally will now be able to go after law-abiding gun users and those who don't have guns at all very easily. My big problem with the modern-day liberal extreme left agenda when it comes to guns is that when you ban them, the person sitting in the wheelchair who is disabled cannot get away. They cannot get away from an attacker, and you have just removed their only potential hope of realistically being able to survive an attack. Some people will say they could pull out a knife. Some people will say they could pull out some sort of taser or some sort of this or some sort of that. None of those, none of those are acceptable compared to a firearm, which is why we always hear the joke, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Inherent in all of this, America is slowly moving away from guns because more and more Americans are being taught at a young age that firearms are scary, that they cause massive death, and they're terrible. What Americans don't really understand is that the only reason other countries have not attacked us is because when their armies come here and our army fails to defend us, they will have AR-15 style rifles, and so will we. That is the reality. When people make the very poor argument of, well, now the government has lasers and they have rockets, and what are these guns going to do against them? We should just give them away, right? And I, I, one, of my, one of my Jewish law school graduate friends that I went to law school with made that argument. I was livid. I was horrified. The Jewish people know better than anyone else that you do not take away the rights of people to defend themselves. Otherwise, you end up in encampments. Otherwise, you end up in ovens. And that's the reality of it. So the problem inherent with this is that more and more people are slowly moving away from knowing firearms and understanding their use. Many people who utilize wheelchairs, many people who utilize walkers, have secret little compartments on them, little ways to pull weapons out, all these things. And that is because the bottom line is that they do not have the capacity to evacuate from the situation. It is actually, and people don't look at it this way, but they should, a luxury to physically get away from potential danger. That's like uh, when somebody says, hey, you don't like the prices of gas, go buy an electric car. Hey, you don't like that guns are dangerous, run away. People who are disabled, many of them, especially in the musculoskeletal category, physically cannot run away. Got a cardio problem? Can't run away? Too bad, so sad. So the other arguments that are usually made uh, are that, you know, basically the police are there to support you. The police are there. They're not there. They're not there in time. And when they get there, they have their own rules and regulations that are not consistently linear with your own well-being. This is why if you see gun regulations to try and reduce the likelihood of people to own and carry handguns, in my opinion, you can do whatever you want, but in my opinion, you should vote to make handguns across the United States on a federal level to be able to be conceal carry. That's the bottom line. It is the only way you can protect children. It is the only way you can protect adults, and it sure as hell is the only way you can protect those who are disabled and retired. And the problem that I see with this is that at the end of the day, we are not having political leaders that are focused specifically on the identity of protecting those classes of individuals that are likely to get injured as a result of poor politics. You could essentially put somebody who is armed in every school. Would that fix the problem? No. Would it be better than what we have now? Absolutely. 
You could train teachers. You could have firearm classes in schools for kids to train them to be responsible with them. You could actually change what we do in America. What we do in America is if something might be scary, we ban it. If it's in a book that we don't, we ban it. If it's a bow and arrow, we ban it. We should not be banning these things. We should be teaching children to use them properly. Anybody else notice that the whole Ukraine thing is now out of the news? We're just not seeing it anymore. The legacy news channels are not covering it. It's not consistent with the whole getting rid of guns idea. Yet it exists still. And I mean, it's destroyed. Russia destroyed it. A lot of people are like, oh, Ukraine is winning and winning and winning. They're winning in the sense that they're still there. But their towns, their cities have been glassed. So the point is, if you see these things where they're trying to reduce firearms, please remember there's a disabled person in a wheelchair sitting in their mobile home with a handgun, with some sort of AR-15 sort of platform that they use to keep keep other people from stealing not only their stuff, but their life. And I, I don't I don't understand why the extreme left has gone into this strip the rights of the American people identity, other than something more nefarious. But it is absolutely crucial that you vote to help the retired and that you vote to help the disabled individuals who choose to protect their life. And let me explain, final note before I pop off, the reason that you should vote for those disabled and retired people to have more protections, not just, oh, if you hurt a retired, if you hurt an elderly person, it's even worse. If you hurt a disabled person, it's even worse, right? Uh, after the fact stuff, okay? That's great, that's great. Let's have the law support them after the fact so that there are factors to how they were injured and that raises the likelihood of more jail time. That's fine. But no police officer, no sheriff, no agent, no one in the government that handles law enforcement is able to promise you that they will be there with a firearm ready to defend you when a problem occurs. And none of them will be able to will be able to effectively promise to you that if they take away your firearms, that you will be safer. None of the school children will be safer. They won't. They won't. They just use these events to emotionally pull on your heart. Please, please remember, when somebody asks you what you feel should be done, you should be thinking, what are my morals? What are my ethics? What do I stand by? And that's how you should be making decisions, not on mood rings and, you know, are you a Taurus? Are you a whatever? It's based upon what you believe. And you should not want the disabled and retired to be without the protection of a firearm. That's the bottom line. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to have another video shortly, and uh, we'll go from there. Please have a wonderful, wonderful, and safe day. Uh, and uh, I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes. All right? Thanks so much. Bye-bye, guys. Have a wonderful way. Uh, we, uh, Memorial Day. All right. Bye-bye.